Hello everyone. Today we will discuss a forces acting on the vehicle. This is the another session part of the vehicle dynamics. In this session, today we will understand that uh, how much force is actively acting on the vehicle and uh, concluding for the ultimate resultant in the direction of the vehicle also. So let's see that uh, what the next diagram is trying to explain to us. This is a vehicle which is uh, resting on the slope. You can see that uh, it is having a slope of uh, theta degree and this vehicle is currently at the resting condition and uh, here uh, we are have we can see that uh, different kinds of forces are acting each force is also acting here and this is the complete uh, summation of the forces acting on the vehicle so now what we'll do we'll try to have a look at the different forces and uh, step by step and we'll try to understand that what these forces are trying to conclude first force acting is called as a weight w which is a called a complete hmm. W is the weight of the vehicle acting at its CZ it's it uh, you can see it this is the portion of a CG of vehicle and the W is acting at here and we can see that W is uh, uh, divided into two different categories or different components that is called as a W sine theta and the another one is w cos theta so ultimately w is acting in the downward direction which is at towards the gravitational force and uh, it is a mass times the acceleration of the gravity so you can say that uh, mass into gravity is equal to w so we are having a two components we'll keep it in remember that uh, these two components are required for further calculations second component is called as a d almberts force d almberts force is actually a uh, resultant of the acceleration of the vehicle so if the vehicle is an accelerating along with the road it is convenient to represent the effect by equivalent internal force known as a d, d almberts force and d almberts force is uh, denoted by w by g into a into x direction so it it tries to show you that if your vehicle is moving in this direction with the acceleration a then this force will act in opposite direction a x so um, this is called as a internal force also internal uh, resistance also of the vehicle which is concluding with the w and uh, gravitational force along with both of the things here force dynamic weight on the tire which are the wf and uh, wp which is uh, uh, denoting it as the weight or uh, weight at the front tire and uh, weight at the rear tire this is a front tire and this is the rear tire for us so this is the forces acting or you can say weight reaction of the weight at uh, both tires then next we are having attractive forces this is called as rxf and rxp so you can see it here rxf here and uh, you can see here rxr sorry it is known as a uh, attractive forces which is uh, derived from the engine so engine gives power to the wheels so this force is known as a attractive force then fifth one is a uh, aerodynamic force aerodynamic force uh, is generally acting in the streamlined if the vehicle is moving in the forward direction then in reaction there will be a, some streams of the air which will get uh, splitted around the vehicle and which creates a, a resistance towards the vehicle which offers a resistance to the vehicle and uh, this is known as a aerodynamic force this is known as a da it is mentioned here most probably we can see that uh, value of uh, da is uh, more here because uh, the air streams are first imparting to the front part of the vehicle hence so uh, this is all about uh, aerodynamic force then next we are having rhz and rhx rhz and rhx is known as a hitch force that suppose i am towing my vehicle 
right suppose something happens and i want to tow my vehicle then i have to apply some forces that is known as rhz that means that uh, this force component is divided into two components which is in z direction and this force component is divided into x direction so there here will be a two components for it that is known as rhz and rhx it is called a hitch force now let's see that if we sum it up with this all forces together then how the equation will look like so the equation will be a wfl daha wgyax rhx rhz wh sin theta w cos theta so uh, let me uh, show you that what all the forces we have studied right now those are got summed up here you can see that uh, wfl wfl is here so it is the uh, generally uh, weight acting on the tire wfl da which is a aerodynamic force aerodynamic force is here also w by g a and x which is called as a d elmbert's force d elmbert force is also here rhx and rhz which are the tractive forces acting on the wheel so these are the traction force also wh sin theta and wh cos theta which is a weight acting weight components acting at the cg so w and w cos theta so weight is also counted here and uh, you can see that uh, rhx and rhz as the hitch forces which are also considered here along with it so hence this is a complete summation of the uh, forces acting on the vehicle what you can do you can just pause this video and uh, can uh, re-evaluate the whole equation which i wanted to explain you here now let's come to the uh, three cases which are uh, considered for the dynamic axle loads so which three cases we are considering the first case is called as a static loads on level grounds okay suppose vehicle is at zero degree and theta so complete our vehicle is resting here okay and it is moving in this direction then what kind of loads are acting then low speed acceleration suppose we are giving some acceleration to the vehicle then and third is load on the grades so uh, if the road is on some theta angle and our vehicle is moving in that direction then this is known as a load on the grid so let's see that if the first condition we consider static load on level grounds so what we have to do vehicle is at stable so sine and cosine components will be the zero and the rhx rhz this is called as a hitch forces will be zero and da which is called as a aerodynamic forces so this everything will be the zero so ultimate conclusion will come at w into c by l w into p by l let's see the second case low speed acceleration so suppose we are our vehicle is on the ground level and having some low speed so we are also considering that da which is called as aerodynamic force it will be the zero and sine and cosine will be also the zero so the, what conclusion we are getting we are getting ultimately a wfs wag h by l so here also d albert's force is acting here we are now considering it here third case load on the grids so uh, here is the case what we have seen in first figure also that our vehicle is resting on some theta degree angle road so uh, we can say that rise over the run condition the common grids are highways which we are keeping as a four percent and the equation will be like this that you can see w f s minus w h by l theta w r s plus w h by l theta so ultimately what equation we have seen in the uh, initiation of this chapter if we keep placing that values in this equation right just like uh, reducing the aerodynamic drag or considering acceleration as zero so we can determine the all three equations together we don't need to remind or memorize this equation just keep in mind those the conditions i have shown you in the previous slides you can repeat the video also and you can rewind the thing also okay so uh, the ultimately summary we can say that this components are acting on the vehicle weight d Elmbert's force dynamic weight of the tire tractive forces da that is called as aerodynamic force 
and uh, his forces so ultimate by using these forces we can conclude our session today thank you everybody